Hey everybody, welcome to Round the Twist, episode 249. It's May 23rd, 2016, and I have a slightly less furry co-host. Because, oh, and here's the Daisy. Come on, Daisy. Come on, all the way. Show off your new haircut, too. The girls got groomed the other day. Why are you being so lovey? This is unusual for this one. This one normally lately has been hiding underneath the end table over here anytime that hubby is not home. So I don't know what her issue is. And I don't know why the Phoebe is being so clingy either because she normally doesn't do that either lately. She normally hides from the twins. So, oh, how is everybody? <laughs> it has been a busy week. Um, this last weekend was full moon, and it was also my work weekend. So, anyone who's not in healthcare, um, let me just briefly explain. When you know when people joke around that oh the crazies come out on the full moon, no, oh but seriously, and when you're in healthcare, um, nurses live in fear of the full moon and the new moon to a lesser extent. It's something I didn't believe in until I got into nursing, and, but with both my parents in. Uh, running on the ambulance service in my hometown, they were both EMTs, and my dad's still a paramedic. Um, yeah, the 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 number of ambulance calls goes up a tick, and I'm lest anyone think I'm like I'm not saying brings out the crazies to be disrespectful to anyone with a psychiatric disorder. I am not saying that at all. I mean, like it it's the time when you as a normal person suddenly you panic over getting a sliver, so you have to go into the ER at 2 in the morning. Or your child's cold that was perfectly fine while doctor's office hours were happening. Suddenly at 2 in the morning is, they're gonna die! And that, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, for some reason, everyone's more emotionally amped up at the full moon, is basically what it boils down to. Um, so yeah, having to, and it kind of affects the day before and the day after. So working a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, where the full moon falls on Saturday, yeah. And one of our newer um, nurses that works night shift hadn't realized it was the full moon. And so I came in Sunday morning and she's like, oh my gosh, last night was nuts. And this happened and this happened. I don't know what's going on. I just looked at her and went, it was full moon. And she sat back and goes, I feel so much better now. That explains everything. As long as there's an explanation, I'm good. So the weekend was kind of hectic. I didn't get a whole lot of crafting done. So hopefully... You won't be disappointed that this week's um, show is uh, less extensive than last week. And I almost feel like I should apologize. I didn't know I'd talked for 38 minutes. I am so sorry. I know your time is valuable, too. That's why I try to keep the show a little bit shorter. So hopefully you took it in chunks where you could fit it in. And thank you if you stuck through the whole thing for watching. Um, I appreciate it. I don't know who does and who doesn't, but thank you. So... It's a knitting show, right? Knitting and coffee? Tea? Hot beverage of choice? So, first things first, what's on the needles? Only two things I worked on this week, and there's not a ton of progress, but there is progress. Oh, I'm sorry, I bumped you, Cooper. Yes, I'm sorry. You're not used to being up here when I record, or you're used to being at the other end of the couch, aren't you? So, the... The first project is the Very Merry Unbirthday Birthday Socks. These are for my friend Sarah for her birthday at the end of July. Um, these are the Zigzagular Socks done by Prairie Girl Designs. Uh, the actual designer's name is Susie White. They are a free pattern over on Ravelry. And this is either my third or my fourth pair of these that I've knit. A few of them, the first couple at least, didn't get shown on the show because it was when I was taking my hiatus from... Uh, Babies, moving, new job, moving again, <laughs> uh, that kind of thing. So you never saw the first two pairs, and they've both since been gifted. So this is my first pair of zigzagulars for the actual show. I'm knitting them up on Blue Moon Fiber Arts socks that rock lightweight in the colorway Matt is a March Hair, which is this lovely, lovely greens and pink and gray. So I'm going to show you the back of the cuff so you can kind of see how that knits up and then let me turn this around here so working down the zigzag and I told you guys last week that I had talked to Sarah 
and asked her to pull out the last pair of these that I knit for her a couple of Christmases ago and count how many times the zigzag hit the side, so the starting point, and then how many times it returned to that same side. And she told me it was a total of five. So I am at currently at three and a half repeats. I am out of the gusset. I think I only did maybe, well, pretty much, I did ten rows. Sad. But uh, I had like half an hour one evening where I had some spare time and sat down and knocked out ten rows in a half hour on a sock. Ten rows on a sock. That's pathetic. That's pathetic. But I did it. I'm knitting this up on a US one and a half. I think these are Addy Sock Rockets, which is a 2.5 millimeter needle. I do like the Addy Sock Rockets. I just have to find a supplier for them. Um, I know Loopy U, in theory, carries them, but every time I go there to get them, and I've got a gift certificate burning a hole in my Loopy U account, um, they never have the size I need. They have threes and fours, and that's it. So. I need to be quicker on the draw or I have to ask my friend Lynn who works there to hold me back a couple of pairs so I have more than one pair that I like to use. Uh, so I'm halfway through repeat four of five total repeats before I start the toe on the first sock of... Yeah, I gotta get my butt in gear because end of July it has to have time to ship to Minnesota. You know what, Sarah's happy because I'm, I'm, I'm an awful, awful friend. I mean, she she appreciates anything handmade and adores the socks that I make her and darns them and darns them and darns them until they're literally falling apart. Um, but so she appreciates if her birthday present, as long as her birthday present gets there before Christmas and as long as her Christmas present gets there before her birthday, she's happy. <laughs> I love those kinds of friends because I suck at getting to the post office. I'm awful at it. <coughs> Excuse me. 99%. So, oops, sorry. Just clear that so it doesn't whistle at us again. Uh, I'm like 99% on the sick thing. I was 98 last week, 99 this week. Next week I should be back up to 100%. God willing. So, second thing that I worked on were the manly socks or manly sock for hubby. Can I help you munchkin? Come on. Come on. Come on, do I snuggle? Come on. I don't know why. Hi. Can I help you? Do you need something? There might be a storm coming in. She can, this one is really sensitive to storms. So, um, yeah, yesterday we had some hail and the street turned into a river and it kind of freaked her out so I'm wondering if we don't have another storm coming rev revving up somewhere in the distance for this afternoon. You okay? Do you, can, can I help you? <laughs> really? Really? Okay. I guess I'm wedged by my fur babies. Phoebe's on this side. Obviously you can see Daisy over here. Oh, thank you Daisy. That wasn't really comfortable. So the Manly Socks. This is, these are just a 72 stitch vanilla sock with an afterthought heel done in Austerman Step in the black dark teal and blue colorway which I believe is color number 24. This is so old I doubt they make this anymore. I don't even know if they make Austerman Step anymore. Um, it's a yarn that came out God, years ago, probably nine or ten years ago I want to say. And it, its big selling point was it had aloe vera and jojoba oil infused into the yarn. It was supposed to soften your feet and last for like 15, 15 to 20 washes, something like that. I don't know that I can feel it in there, but it feels like a good workhorse yarn like the uh, Regia and Opal. So hopefully it'll hold up to hubby's use abuse. The sock is done, minus the heel. And the fact it still has, um, yeah, needles in the toe. Basically, I finished the toe the other night, and then I was too lazy to lean from one end of the couch to the other to grab the bag that had my knit kit in it so I could Kitchener the toe. So, knitting it up on a US-1, I believe these are Addy Lace needles, um, since they're the gold ones. Uh, 
I like to get sock rockets in ones in 2.25 millimeter needle, but I haven't obviously, as I explained, haven't been able to find them yet. So it's done minus the heel. And I'm like I talked about last week, I'm going to wait to do the heel because I had a good chunk of the gray down here. So I'm going to have to pull out a full repeat to get back to the gray to do the heel if I want it to match up, which I kind of do. Hubby says he doesn't care. Well, I'm the one knitting them and the OCD in me would drive me nuts. So one sock, most of the way done. I should have it kitchenered and start the second one soon-ish, but I have to work the next two days, so no promises. At least not immediately. It should be done by next week and the second one started. Uh, so that's it for the knitting. I do have one more thing on and then off the hook. Daisy, can you can you stay out of Phoebe's ear, please? Please? I know. I know. It's awful. I'm so mean. I'm such a mean dog mommy. It's terrible. So, future Christmas planning. The snowflake situation. My 99 snowflakes book from Leisure Arts. Mine, now that I absconded with it a few years ago out of my mom's stash. So last week I had finished Snowflake 10. Three days ago, no, yeah, three days ago, I moved on to Snowflake 11. Just one up here. It's another one by the lovely Miss Helen Malinkovich Milton. And boom. Three days, one, ah, two, three snowflakes. These ones, I kind of was able to stretch them out to resemble, and then they got crumpled up back up in the bag, but you can kind of see what they're going to look like. You can kind of see. Yeah. So those are finished. Snowflake number 11. Done. I thought I got another. I must have left it out there. I already have the little sandwich bag and everything labeled. I just I think I left it out in the kitchen because I did that right as I was making my coffee. All right. So Snowflake 11 is done. Snowflake 12, I will start probably this weekend at some point. Um... And then once I finish Snowflake 12, that will be my whole commitment for the year. And if I can finish those before the end of the month, I'll have done what I had planned on doing in 12 months in five. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to stop with just the 12 and go, oh, I'm off the hook till next year. No, I'm going to keep going. And they do get a little more fussy, um, a bit larger as well. So you'll be seeing more snowflakes. I don't know how well they will do. Um, I'm going to have to buy beads for a couple. I don't know how you bead on... Oh, you pre-string the beads. Oh, okay, good to know. Oh. Sorry, I just I saw this one that had beads in it the other day and I was like, how do I do that? I don't know. <sighs> okay, so snowflake number 11. Done. Finished. I don't know why. I just pulled that out and was able to blast through that one. Certain snowflake patterns, just they've been going easier for me than others, and I'm able to get through them quite quickly. Others not so much, but yeah, one at a time. I'm just taking them one at a time. I don't know what the heck I'm doing with this crochet thing. I'm, I'm reading a pattern, and it's not even a charted pattern. I look at those, and that's completely... It, it's googly gook to me. I look at that and I'm like, oh, like I can see how it would work, but then if, unless there's a key like right there, I'm going, uh-uh, uh-uh, don't, mm. So this is all written instructions. There's no graphing, there's no charting, there's uh-uh. And I'm still flipping back and forth to the front going, what's a half double crochet again? Thank God everything is explained in the front. So, huh. Pokey things. Moving along. I only worked on one this week. Hubby hasn't been uh, 
gaming too much. Although, after last week, I did look up. Thank you, everyone. There's a couple people that told me um, the next DLC, which I believe is called Wine and Blood for Witcher 3, is um, coming out May 31st. So I told Hubby, and he had kind of forgotten that he had a second DLC coming, and I had looked it up actually before, um, before you guys had responded to tell me when it was coming out, but uh, excited. Because for me, The Witcher 3 soundtrack has, is amazing, and it's really good to knit along to, and the battles are... I guess the, the battles between the main character and monsters or the main character and other individuals is a lot... The, the battles stretch out more than, say, in Assassin's Creed or in... or there's actually battle music um, unlike in... What's the zombie one he's been playing? Oh my gosh! Dead Island. There we go. <laughs> wow. Um, like the only times the the music gets really like suspenseful whenever uh, your character in Witcher Three is fighting, and in those other games, it, Assassin's Creed it starts to, but then the fight's usually over in like less than ten seconds. So it's like you just start to knit a little faster to go with the timing of the music, and then oh, it's over. Where when the battles are longer, I've been able to actually get a good like two, three inches of sock done in the space of half an hour, uh, just because he's doing a lot more fights, and uh, yeah, I, li I like it when the music picks up a little bit more, is basically what I'm trying to say, so I'm excited for this DLC to come. So pokey things! I haven't worked on a very Merry Christmas time because we haven't been downstairs playing video games and me observing. However, I did get like one day of stitching done on Once Upon a Time. This is the Once Upon a Time sampler from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And right now, if you go over to their website, which is thefrostedpumpkinstitchery.com, and go to their blog, they actually have a coupon code up for, I believe it's 25% off any uh, patterns or kits that are listed in their sales section. And I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe the code is summertime, if I remember right. And that's going through the 31st of May, and they've got some good stuff, but it's only on kits and patterns that are in stock. It's not, I don't believe it's on digital, and a lot of the patterns that I wanted were out of stock. So, or the kits I wanted were out of stock. So I didn't take advantage of it, but you might be able to. Anyway, Once Upon a Time Sampler, which is one of the kits that is available. Uh... This is the September block. It is Rapunzel. And honestly, I didn't. All I wrote down last week for my update on, in my show notes was Rapunzel. Like, great, helpful, Karen. Good job. So, I'm trying. I was trying to remember when I wrote in my show notes exactly what I had stitched on this week, and I've only had one day of stitching. If I remember right, I was partway up with the hair. I obviously I finished the hair. I did the hair bow. I did the, the arms and half of the face before I was interrupted by small children yesterday coming out for their nap. Uh, oh, and I did the one, one little flower because it happened to match the hair bow and I wasn't going to use that color again for anything else. So, <laughs> one little random flower hanging out. Eventually that's going to be like a little hanging planter basket full of flowers. So that's it. That's all I've been working on this week. Um, I haven't had, because of work this weekend, I haven't had that many days to, or days in a row, to stitch. And one of those days, Monday, was actually lost to me. Um, I needed to run a few errands while the kids were napping. And then I get home and hubby had decided, let's get rid of the cribs slash toddler beds entirely. And we moved... Uh, the twins are now in separate rooms. <laughs> Tara's been sleeping in the back bedroom in a pack and play for the last month, month and a half, because if we have her and Gabe in the same room, she's the instigator and she wakes them up. Uh, and they end up playing for three hours instead of going to sleep. So both nap time and for bedtime, we've been separating them. And for a while, we would, when we would go to bed then after she was asleep, we'd pick her up and move her into her bed. But Joyle's just like, eh, why bother? So. 
We moved her crib mattress into the back bedroom. That will now be her room. The front bedroom that was both of their room is now Gabe's and has a twin bed in it, like box spring mattress on the floor. Uh, we didn't want to put the frame up right away until they got used to it. And my parents are coming out to visit in a couple weeks and they'll be bringing my old twin bed and box spring and frame out uh, and that will be Tara's to go in the back bedroom. They're loving it so far, I think. Uh, Tara runs straight back for her bed when it's nap time. Gabe runs straight to his bed. Uh, they look so little <laughs> in the big beds. I mean, obviously Tara's still on a crib mattress on the floor. Um, so she doesn't look quite so small, but Gabe in, in a regular twin bed looks so teeny. <laughs> My babies are growing up. I took them in to see Daddy before lunch at work, and they were running around, so I was like, hey, let's get them on the scale, see how much they weigh, and um, Tara's almost 36 pounds, and Gabe is 35 and a half, and yeah, they're, they're big kids, and people were looking at them and going, so when did they turn three again? I said, they are not three, they're two and a half, they turned three in October, and they're like, no. No, they're huge! And I'm like, yeah, I know. <sighs> Crazy. Okay, so very and Sundry. Upcoming events. Uh, I have one. I have the Estes Park Wall Market. That's June 9th through the 12th. We are going to be there as a family on June 11th. If you are there, please come up and say hi. I will have buttons with me. Round the twist buttons. If you've gotten one before, I'm sorry, they haven't changed. I ordered too many years years ago. Um, but if you'd like one, I, I'll, I'll have some with me and I'll offer them. If you've already got one, go, no, it's okay. And I'll probably be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I have a stinky coon being offered to me. Um, but yeah, I'll see everyone there on Saturday. Maybe on Sunday we'll see how Saturday goes with the kids. Uh, so, oh yeah, speaking of life, that's where I was going with the whole moving the kids around. So that's why I haven't had much chance because I basically, since last week I had Thursday to craft, I was off. I, I worked Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, hubby was getting stuff done around the house and I didn't have time to do anything. And then there was yesterday. That was it. So I got two days out of the week to do anything crafty. Um, and then this week, the my work schedule's a little bit screwed up, a little bit, because of the holiday on Monday. It's Memorial Day here in the States. And so rather than having, so I'm working the next two days. Rather than having Saturday, Sunday, Monday off, I have Saturday, Sunday off. I work Monday, Tuesday. And then I'm off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, where I'd normally work Tuesday and then work Friday, Saturday, Sunday again. So I'll get done what I can get done and what I don't get done, oh well. Um, I'm hopeful. But let me get into here and let's do some any questions. And of course, I'm so prepared. I didn't have this opened up. I'm so sorry. Okay. So if you have any questions, anything at all for me, go over to the sticky thread at the top of the Ravelry board. It says any questions is the name of the thread. Go in there and I'm just working my way down through the list. So if you have any questions about any old projects of mine that you'd like to see again, um, about the cross stitch, why haven't I been spinning, and anything. Don't ask why I haven't been spinning. I'm being lazy with the spinning, okay? Um, but I'm trying to do at least one question a week. Sometimes we do more. Stop. Don't scratch, please. You just had a bath. You do not need to scratch, okay? We'll shake instead. Okay, so the question this week comes from Gypsy Knit. Uh, I've recently gotten interested in spinning my dog's fur. Have you ever spun with dog fur? Have you ever worn something knit with dog fur? Thanks. Um, have I ever spun with dog fur? Intentionally, no. However, this one, the Phoebe, um, when I first started spinning, she would not leave me alone and she would sit in my lap and occasionally her fur would twist into the yarn. Except, um, so Bichons are kind of like poodles, they don't shed, so 
the, the hair, it's hair, not fur, and the hair would not pull out. So I would have to undo, it as I would feed the yarn into the machine, suddenly she would yip and here's her skin stretching. Um, so I'd have to stop, back up, untwist the yarn, get her fur out. That was when she would be really, really fluffy as a puppy. And her hair would be like an inch, inch and a half long, and I liked her all fuzzy, but um, we don't do that much anymore. And have I ever worn something made of dog fur? Uh, no, I haven't. So that's it. <laughs> so we'll do another question. Gypsy Knit, I hope that helped. Have I ever spoken with dog fur? No. Have I ever worn anything made of knit with dog fur? Intentionally? No. Um, I'm sure I've worn stuff that has the dog fur, you know, kind of dog fur flies and it's worked in. Uh, so, Loops of Love, JM. Of all the baby gifts you received from viewers, have any of them stood the test of time? I know they outgrow clothes, so I'm thinking more of blankets, toys, etc. that became favorites for you or the twins. Um, actually, uh, the sweaters have actually st stood the, tw the test of time, and I actually pulled out a couple um, that Jess... Um, show me your knits. She had gifted me this huge bag full of, of baby stuff, but she had knit everything up to a year size, so I was able to put the kids in it when they were smaller. But they still wear them, albeit the sleeves are like three-quarter length sleeves, which is fine because they're toddlers, they're messy. So she knit this one, and I didn't bring both of them out, but she knit one with a bunny, this is the bunny, and then another one with a bear. That looks very similar, except it has shorter ears. Uh, for the twins, and they still wear these. They love these. Um, if they're cold in the morning, they'll grab one and come running out to me and want their sweater put on. But she did intarsia. Um, Jess, don't shoot me. She can't shoot me. She's over in Denmark right now. I'm going to show your intarsia work because look how good her intarsia was. I cannot do intarsia. I suck at intarsia. It's awful. Um, she did such a good job. Mine always pulls and looks terrible, and I should probably take a class or something, but or learn to do it better. And then she also did, ooh, well, I guess, these little um, cardigans that are just like little oatmeal-colored textured sweaters. They're so soft. They're so beautiful. The buttons are these fun little multicolored swirls, and these were identical for the twins, so it didn't matter if it was Tara's or Gabe's that I was putting on. And the twins, again, they still wear these because they're cardigans. They don't ever not fit around, and if they don't fit around, I just leave them unbuttoned, and it's just a layering piece. Um, the other thing that we used a lot, um, any of the blankets that were sent, I can't find a lot of the blankets that were sent, because I think they're still packed up in boxes in the basement. Um, but I did find the ones that my mom had knit for them which were the modern baby blanket out of Mason Dixon knitting. That's it. Uh, and she knit one for Tara, one for Gabe. This one's Gabe's. On Tara's it was all the same colors except the, the brick red was a pale pink. And we use these a lot, especially um, for over the car seats or for over their rock and plays, the little bassinets that we had in the living room. Especially that first winter because, yeah, they needed an extra layer. Um, and I decided to keep them. They haven't, um, they really haven't attached to blankets as loveys. Uh, Tara's lovey is a teeny little, like, blanket square about, meh, a foot, maybe slightly bigger. Foot square that has a satin edging on it and a satin back and then there's a little bird in the middle of it on the fuzzy side. That's her lovey, and Gabe's lovey has been a Mickey Mouse, a Disney Mickey Mouse Zoom Zoom. It's about, it's a jelly bean looking thing, about like that. It's about that long, about yay big around. Um, it's kind of a simplified version of Mickey Mouse, and he loves that thing. Um, other knitted things that they played with a lot, uh, the person that, and I can't, again, another thing that I can't find, and I'm sure they got destroyed, or um, I know they were not on an awful lot, but... Uh, the whale rattles that someone had needle felted, uh, those got a lot of love, use, and abuse. Um, 
pretty much any of the sweaters that people sent I saved because it's something I can pass on to them. So like the baby surprise jackets that um, a friend in Canada had knit for them. Obviously the sweaters that Jess sent. Um, I still have baby booties from several people that uh, it was baby booties honestly as soon as we put them on they kicked them off so it was like meh, losing battle. Um, blankets were always good but uh, we stuck a lot to the flannel swaddling blankets just because they spit up so much I didn't want to wreck anything. Uh, I'm trying to think. I can't remember what else people sent. Honestly that whole part of my life is a blur. So we'll go with that. Um, toys. I'm trying to think. There's a set of turtles, stuffed turtles that someone knit that are still part of their toys that they keep in their beds and they play with occasionally. So I think that's it. That's everything that we've got going right now in terms of knitted gift stuff. So, um, oh, because I know someone will ask, this is the, oh, poop, what is this? It's called my I Need a Win sweater on my project page. Oh, now I have to look. Just because I know someone's going to ask me, oh, what sweater did you wear in episode 249? It doesn't have a picture in it. I remember that. I never got a picture. Uh, further back, further back. Really? Not that far back. I'm sorry, you guys. I just... Uh. Well, I didn't think it was that long ago. Oh, there it is. Ways back. It's the Calligraphy Cardigan by Hannah Fettig. This is knit out of Socks That Rock Heavyweight uh, in the green that sings. I put backing buttons on. These are my front buttons, but I rarely button the thing. It's just, it's kind of a layering piece. I actually wasn't going to wear it for the show, but it was kind of slung over the back of the couch and I didn't want it to look messy. In fact, this has kind of become my schlubbing around the house sweater. And I love it for that. Um, it's really heavy. It's kind of boxy. It's usually found slung over the back of the couch, so I can just grab it and throw it on any time I'm cold, which is most of the time. Like today, it's beautiful outside. It's in the mid-60s. Hello, springtime in Colorado. Um, and I'm sitting inside in a sweater. Oh, well. Uh, on that, I've been rambling a lot, so I'm going to let you guys go until next week. Happy knitting.